And so I'm very pleased to introduce to you Jay Borenstein, who teaches computer science at Stanford University. We are very fortunate at Stanford to be in this milieu of brilliant individuals who uh, are part of the teaching faculty at Stanford, uh, bringing with them experience of starting companies, for example, uh, Integration Appliance and uh, Kespri, which Jay has been involved with. And uh, Jay plays an important role in computer science in bringing a spirit of entrepreneurship uh, as well as uh, teaching some of the VR content development. Jay. How you all doing? H hanging in there. Uh, just to kind of calibrate a little bit, uh, how many of you have done some software development in your career at some point? So, okay, about half the room. So that kind of gauges how, how deep to, to, to go there. Um, yeah, so I teach in the computer science department here and uh, last year, we piloted a course called Intro to Content Creation for Virtual Reality for the first time. And I think that was in and of itself a, a milestone in, in thinking about how far the field has come, the genre has come. Student interest is, is very high. Uh, there's lots of entrepreneurial ambitions for leveraging this new medium to do exciting things. And people want to learn about it. So uh, I want to give you some sense of if you were a content creator, um, how you might go about that, how you, how you might get started. But uh, I also want to back up a little bit, and I, I think you've heard a lot of, of interesting things, a lot of interesting perspectives today, and I think it's worth kind of reflecting on the, the state of virtual reality right now. So what is certainly driving the industry forward is gaming. The editors that content creators use to produce the content that that we're consuming, uh, whether it's an educational-related venture or whether it's a, it is a game or something else, these are all byproducts of, of the gaming industry, and they all kind of the tools and mindsets and things like that are all being pushed forward by by the gaming industry. And uh, at a company like Oculus, which is uh, driving a lot of the highest-end technology, uh, they're in a you know a knife fight with uh, the Googles and the Samsungs and other other folks in the in the world to kind of push the 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 frontier forward from hardware and software standpoint, and that's being played out in the gaming in the gaming genre. So what we're going to see in the next year, probably two years, is uh, in, from a replacement of gaming console standpoint, a replacement of PC gaming standpoint. That's where a lot of the adoption is going to come and that's going to influence the public perception of VR. Uh, it's going to influence the way that, that VR develops. So big picture, that's, that's kind of what's going on. So talks like these I really value because I think that society will have to grapple with using this medium for, for good, leveraging it in, in ways that, uh, for example, don't promote violence that, that might come out of people being immersed in, in video games and things like this. There's lots of opportunity to do amazing things because it's so immersive. But uh, there's also a lot of revenue and money to be made on the gaming side, and that's what's going to drive the industry forward in the early going. So kind of like in the early days of the internet, when games were also one of the best ways to monetize, uh, that's going to be the case for VR. So that's just it's kind of a backdrop, and, that, and that's what's happening. At companies like uh, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, ones that have a real vested interest in being a, a social communication hub that, that leverages the medium of VR, I think expectations are much more modest for the medium being used in that way in the coming years. I think that if there were, for example, a half million people that were communicating in a networked experience in some fashion socially, um, and that was being hosted by Google or hosted by Facebook or hosted by Microsoft, any one of those companies would consider that a win for, for 2016. So VR is amazing. It's, it's for sure a tide that's coming. But let's also recognize that the reality is we, we actually don't even know what we don't know at this point. It's, it's very, very early. We've just scratched the surface of what's possible. I think what's really uh, very exciting is if we forecast maybe five years down the road when um, people are much more confident with the medium, it's much more accessible to, to the general public. And kind of uh, on my side, the content creation, whereas the bar is very high right now to produce content that is of high quality and doesn't make someone nauseous and it's just generally a, a positive experience, that bar will continue coming down. And I think five years from now, um, 
is kind of a good, a good marker that uh, we'll start realizing a lot of potential for the medium at that, at that point. So uh, just kind of to, to reset, and I think, uh, as I said, it's terrific to have days like today where we think about uses beyond the gaming genre, but I also want to make sure we're not in a, in a bubble where we think that that's what's going to drive the industry because it really is games. Okay, so um, let's talk about content creation a little bit. Oh, actually, one more analogy that I love to give is if you think back to when TV first came online, the first TV shows, what were they like? They were a bunch of white middle-aged males sitting around having a conversation. It was basically a radio show just broadcast in black and white. And I think that's actually a fair analogy to what's going on in VR right now. You primarily are seeing console gaming experiences just on steroids in an immersive 3D environment. And they're amazing, incredibly immersive. Um, they're awesome. But generally speaking, that's, to me, that feels like that. We'll be amazed at how little we were taking advantage of the medium five years from now when we look back to today. OK, so getting started as a developer, it is um, a different experience. If you have programmed a web application before, um, and this is near and dear to my heart, I like to work in an editor that's a keyboard-based editor called VI. So I'm, I'm moving around. I don't have a need for a mouse. I'm whizzing around. And once I get familiar with the shortcuts, you can be very productive. This is not feasible for VR. The whole paradigm for how you develop things requires a very heavyweight editor where you're moving around three-dimensional objects. You're crafting a visual scene. So there's a whole skill set that, that feels very different to developers who are coming from a medium, say, web development. And that takes some getting used to. Uh, one thing some students pointed out to me the other day is, gosh, it takes forever to load this editor. Like, you know, you press, you double click your application to open it up. You're actually even on a very high end machine. You're, you're waiting a, a few seconds for that thing to load. And that, that just feels that, that sort of evidence to me of how uh, much we're pushing the, the capabilities of the, of the hardware ecosystem right now. That the tools that we need to use actually are very taxing on, on hardware, and you actually need pretty high-end hardware if you want to render at the best frame rates and, and have the best experience. The development rig that we would recommend for our class where we're doing very high-end development, that is about a $3,500 setup right now. So it's not, it's not trivial. Now, considering that it was 20,000 a few years ago, we're certainly trending in the right direction, and it's going to be significantly lower a few years from now. But it's a, it's a pretty heavyweight lift. So again, I think one of the interesting pieces is that you get a little bit less uplift as somebody who's done software development in other mediums coming to VR than you might going from, say, web to mobile. A lot of the development interactions and the tools in that transition don't feel entirely dissimilar. But when you move to VR, um, it, can feel, it can feel quite different, um, starting with the piece that it's, it's, there's this very visual element to it. The second piece is there is a real premium on design in virtual reality. So we think of software engineering as someone who's um, very technically minded and sort of in, in the code and, and putting these pieces together. But a VR experience that doesn't have uh, a really well-curated look and feel, isn't, isn't developed very, very thoughtfully from a design standpoint, that, that is a disaster. So you definitely need to take skill sets from different parts uh, of a product development equation in a way that, is, uh, that translates to the user experience extremely directly. Has to be there. And so I think that piece is, is really quite exciting because a lot of folks who may be more on the uh, visual side of, of, where of what their interests are, uh, even artists, things like this piece, there's a huge opportunity in VR for them. And uh, those skills will be very valued in the, in the VR community. So you need those, those two pieces to go together. And there has to be a, a strong collaboration between the technical component that's enabling these actors, that it's sort of what we call it, the actors in a, uh, in a three-dimensional environment to, uh, to move and have functionality and to interact with different scenes, and the designers who are um, making those uh, look and feel in certain ways. That has a lot to do with the user experience. So coming to the uh, development environment, you have something that uh, 
as I mentioned, has evolved from the gaming industry. So the two most popular engines for doing content creation right now are Unity and Unreal Engine from Epic Games. And so most people will, I would say the average person chooses Unity. It's a little bit more approachable in the early going. The folks who are do doing really high-end game development, they tend to use Unreal Engine. And that's kind of where the, the battle lines have been drawn, although Unreal Engine is trying to move to the middle and become more accessible, and Unity is trying to move up and become more high-end. So they'll, they'll probably meet in the middle somewhere. At the end of the day, the skills that will be most useful to you as a software development are C++ programming skills. Um, that's uh, the most efficient language that most of the games are compiled into. And so you have the ability to do a lot of things without needing to code because you have these heavyweight editors that will allow you to drag and drop different objects and describe how you want them to interact and move in different scenes. But if you really want to do something custom and you want to create an experience that's new and novel, then at some point you're going to have to write your own, your own scripts in C++. So as I said, I don't want to go uh, too deeply into this, but uh, I want to mention a resource for you that if you are interested in, in getting started in, in developing content for VR, we have a, an open source way for you to do that. And the test is, I don't have a slide for it, I'm just going to say it to you so you'd have to remember to go there. And if you do that, you're on your way. That shows you really have, have what it takes. So uh, it's layoutvr.com, layoutvr.com, it's free. This is a lot of the material that we've piloted here at Stanford and it will take you through uh, producing your first VR experiences, your kind of hello world VR experiences. So I will stop there. I'm being told there, that is the amount of time we have. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.